This 100 year old typewriter has become one of my favorite things. It's an Underwood number no. three. I got it on Facebook Marketplace a few weeks ago. I cleaned it, I fixed it up, I got it a new ribbon. I got it working really well and it is so much fun to use. This thing is a beautiful piece of engineering, but there is one feature that I want to add. So to use this typewriter, you load your paper in the back, it feeds under this roller, and as you type, the paper in the front gets longer and longer and longer. If I return a few times like I'm typing, this gets longer. And at a certain point, you start wondering, how much paper do I have left? For a while, you can see this paper gets shorter and shorter, but at a certain point, the paper you have remaining gets so short that it's fully under the roller and you can't see how much you have left. I was talking to my dad who grew up using manual typewriters like this one, and I asked him, how would you know how much paper you had left once it got hidden under the roller? And his response was that you kind of just develop a sense for it. This may not sound like a big deal, but imagine you're typing along. There's like this anxiety of not knowing when you're gonna just run off the page. And the rail right here blocks the bottom edge, so you don't even see it until you're right up on it. Oh, and there we go. This typewriter has a beautiful way of showing where you are left to right, but it doesn't have that same way of showing where you are top to bottom. So I want a visual indicator to show me exactly how much paper I have left. So I took a piece of letter-sized paper and made a line at every inch along its length. I'm gonna use this to figure out how far each click of the roller advances the paper. So there we are at the first line. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's the next line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Next line. Six clicks of the roller, that's six lines of text, equals one inch. Six clicks times 11 inches is 66 clicks for the whole sheet of paper. I'm putting a little piece of tape on top of the roller handle, and I'm gonna use that to figure out how many clicks are in one revolution of the roller. One, two, three, four, 21, 22, 23, 24, 30, 31, 32, 33 clicks. Wait a second, okay, so 66 clicks for an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, 33 clicks for one revolution. That means that one revolution of the roller is half a sheet of paper, two revolutions are one sheet. Wow, that is definitely by design, and that's gonna make our invention a lot easier to design. I'm right-handed, so I'm always grabbing this roller handle to advance the paper. So I'm thinking about putting the indicator on this side, and conveniently, there's this little knurled piece that I'm hoping we can clip the indicator onto. The largest diameter, is 0.65 inches, and then it tapers to 0.6 inches. It'd be nice if our indicator sort of matched this handle. So what is this diameter? 1.35 inches. All right, um, bit of a change of plans. I was going to rotate the knob for the roller and the whole thing just shattered. I think this rubber is so old and brittle that it was really on its last legs. But I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise because making the indicator to fit on this cylinder will be a lot easier than making it fit on this tapered conical thing. And instead of worrying about a pressure fit, we can just use this set screw to lock it in place. I think I wanna cut out part of the indicator on the CNC using this half inch Baltic birch plywood. So we wanna know the true thickness of that. And I know, I know this is technically 11 millimeter Baltic birch plywood. It comes from Europe but we're doing everything in inches, so I need to convert it anyway, and it's always good to know the true thickness. I'm in Fusion 360, and as always, I'm gonna start by inputting all those dimensions we took as user parameters. So I'll go to Modify, Change Parameters, and start adding those in. Handle Diameter, CNC Bit Diameter, which is a new one for me, and the Cylinder Diameter. So I'll create a new sketch on the XY plane, create a circle that is our cylinder diameter, and then I'll create another circle that is the handle diameter. I want this indicator to be in two pieces, an inner ring and an outer ring. That way you can load in the paper and twist the outer ring so it's always starting at zero. So I think I'll just do halfway between the cylinder diameter and the outer ring. Now, what is the distance between those circles? Because if it's too thin, our wood is gonna be really weak. 
0.175 inches. I mean, it's not super thick. I would like to get that up to a quarter inch. So I'll change the handle diameter to, let's say 1.6, 0.238. Yeah, I think that will be fine. I wanna create a notch where I can insert numbers. So how big should that notch be? It has to be greater than our CNC bit diameter. So if we just put that in, okay, that's super small. So we have lots of space to go with. Actually, if we make this a dovetail shape, then the letters won't easily fall out. So let's do that. 100 degrees should be fine. And then mirror, draw another line like that. Awesome, okay. So now we can take this entire outer ring and extrude it by our wood thickness. And I'll create a separate extrude command and extrude out our dovetail. Perfect. Now we can create a circular pattern using our extrude command. So we'll do feature, that extrude. There's 33 clicks per revolution. So if we have 11 indicators, that means that each indicator is three clicks and three clicks is half of an inch. So I think that works. I think that's good. I wanna see what that's gonna look like in the CNC program. I have an add-on downloaded to Fusion. You should download this. It's called Export to Origin, made by Shaper Tools. And it allows you to export SVG files from Fusion, which is great for laser and CNC work. So I'm going to export a single solid body. I'm in my CNC program and I can import that SVG we created. Perfect. I actually increased the slope on those dovetails, which is why it looks a little different now. So we can go to process, create a tool path, and we want to make an outline first. Flat end mill, oh, perfect, okay. Only 22 minutes to cut that. I thought it was gonna take longer. That's so cool. I wanna go try it. Let's go see how it goes. Snapmaker recently sent me the A350T, a three-in-one 3D printer, laser cutter, and CNC. I have it set up out here in the enclosure, which they also sent me, so thank you so much, Snapmaker. I am so excited to use this thing. I'm gonna use blue tape and CA glue to attach this to the bed. That way I can cut the full depth without any clamps or tabs. This method can feel a little wasteful, but for small parts like this, it makes sense. Now I'll just apply some CA glue to this side. Spray some activator on this side and press them together. Awesome, rock solid. So I'm actually filming through the touchscreen cutout because this is completely enclosed and it's super quiet outside of here. I can talk at like a normal volume and outside of the garage you cannot hear a thing. Five minutes left. That looks so good. All right, let's see if it cut all the way through. Oh yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Nice. I want a really snug fit between the inner ring and the outer ring. So I'm gonna make the diameter of the outside of the inner ring the same as the inside of the outer ring. And if they don't fit together, I'll just sand it until it fits. I'll go to export to origin, select my body, inner ring dot SVG. So I'll import my SVG, super simple tool path. Target depth is, so I actually measured the wood and it wasn't 11 millimeters. I did a cut at 11 millimeters and it didn't cut all the way through. I had to trash that one. So it's a good thing I measured it. The true thickness is 12.45 millimeters. Awesome, all right, successful cut. Let's see if it even close to fits. All right, nice. They are the same size. It's not sliding in right now, but we'll do a little bit of sanding and that will be a perfect fit. Oh no, I can get it in. Ooh, check that out. Goes in on that side. That's awesome. For the indicators, I wanna do 3D printed numbers that will slide into those dovetails. So I'll create a new sketch on the XY plane, project one of my dovetails, close it off with a line, and then extrude that shape to the top of my ring. I'll turn off 
my rings, and then I'm just gonna put this on the XY plane so it's easier to work with. So I have to modify, align, click on the bottom face, and then move that so it is lying on the XY plane. Kind of like the rings, I want this to be a really tight fit so there's no risk of it falling out. So I'm not gonna add any clearance, but I am going to bevel the leading edges. That way it's easier to slide into the wood. So I'll make a chamfer. Let's change our chamfer type to distance and angle just because I want to increase that angle a little bit to like say 60 degrees. There we go, that's more gradual. So I'll create a new sketch on top of there. I want my numbers to be oriented this way and we can create text. There's a variety of fonts in this typewriter, some with serifs, some without. And I'm gonna print this with a simple sans serif font to match the keys. And to further match the keys, I'm gonna print it two-toned black on white. Arial is a classic. I think Arial would be fine. And it looks pretty similar to the keyboard. Maybe Proxima Nova. No, that's not it. Open Sans. How does that match? Not very well. Um, Arial might be the closest. Right click, press pull. And how tall do we wanna make it? 0.15 millimeters is one layer height. Let's try three, three layers, 0 0.45 millimeters. If I go to slice that, let's see if that's going to be printable. I'm hoping it's not too small. Oh, it is too small. Maybe Arial Black will work. I think that will look really cool. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. All right, love parametric design that updated instantly. Let's see if that will 3D print. Perfect, okay. Three layers, I think that will be good. Insert Spinal Tap joke of this one does go all the way up to 11. So I got the numbers in my slicer. We're gonna print out of PETG because I have that in black and white. So what I'm going to do is go down to my first layer where the numbers start, click on the plus, and that is where the color change will happen. Awesome, so when it gets up to layer 17, it'll prompt me to switch the color. Let's go print these and see how it works. All right, the printer is beeping at us, which means it's time to change the filament. So we just press the knob to unload and we insert our black filament. Oh my God, they're so visible. Like the quality is fantastic. Second layer going on. All these numbers are gonna take like a minute to print overall because it's just three layers. Oh, beautiful. All right, moment of truth. Really happy I beveled. That's gonna be a tight fit. Ooh, maybe I can just press it on the table and that will, that will push it in place. Oh yeah. Ooh, that is tight, but I think it's gonna go. Nice. Oh, it's perfect. The way this is gonna work, we need to put them in every other. This might make more sense when I actually demonstrate it. I love a good pressure fit. Now our ring can fit over. We're gonna have to grind that down a little bit so that this ring can go over top. Then we can just grind a new slot into the end. There we go, locked on. All right, moment of truth. Let's see the fit between the rings. Ooh, that is a nice pressure fit. And I can rotate it, inner one doesn't move. I wanna be able to see exactly where I am on the page at a glance, and I wanna be able to see that from this position while I'm writing at the typewriter. So for the finishing touch, I want to add a pointer that's viewable from this angle. I wanted the pointer to match the details of this typewriter, so I designed it to be the same shape as these left to right pointers in the front. Then I printed it out of silver PLA. Oh, that looks so cool. Now I want it to bend down to point at a number. So I'm gonna use a hairdryer to soften up the PLA so I can bend it into place. Wow, that was the first time I did that and it was surprisingly easy. 
I even twisted it a little bit so that it's more visible from the sitting position. All right, let's try out the full process. So we got our paper. You can see the very top of the paper there. Go over to my dial, can pull out the outer ring slightly and rotate it to 11, which for this also means zero. Push it back into place and we're good to go. Now I'll rotate to an inch in and my paper is at an inch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Dial is at two and we're at the second line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're at three. Eight, now we're on the second rotation. And let's see what happens when we get to 11. One, two, three. And look at that, our paper is just reaching the very bottom. If we turn it one more, it's out completely. That is awesome. Oh, it works perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more. And if you're interested in directly supporting this channel, I have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. There's some cool benefits over there, including a patrons exclusive Instagram page where I post behind the scenes content. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to patreon.com slash Morley If you love this typewriter as much as I do, I've made a playlist with all the videos I've made about this Underwood number three. So check those out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.